Starts J. I hope everyone is having a great day. So, my gods, Anubis, Thoth, goddesses, Bastet, and Sekhmet, and King Tut and King Ramesses II behind me, always giving me truth. Truth. Plus, all my wonderful stones I have in my hand. And, as usual, drinking from the Eye of Horus. So, anyway, I hope you have watched my video on Yahweh battles Akhenaten's God and who is the winner. <laughs> well, my friends, check it out. And the story's also in your Bible. And, you know, if you're confused or if you are discombobulated or you're scratching your head when you're reading this Bible have you ever just like sat back and read it and you're they're giving you rabbit trails you can't keep up if your life depended on it because that's exactly what they wanted you to do keep you confused they talk in code so, and it's people like all the wonderful scholars and all the wonderful people that really put their life's work into it that brings us these books and people that read these books and understand it and like to break it down and then break it down in layman's terms and have YouTube videos like myself. I'm not saying that I'm a perfect person because I'm not. I am not a scholar, a theologian, or a philosopher. I, as a nurse, I try to break things down in its simplest forms because I've had to deal with a lot of people that don't understand. So, I'm hoping that I do come across well. I do hope that you can understand me. Please, at any time, comment, ask questions, ask me to do something, or if you don't know where to find it, I'll help you. Now, what I really would love to do, as I know all of my subscribers, we probably live in different countries, different states. Um, my passion would be to have like some type of club, a book club, um, controversial issues, and we can meet, um, you know, once a week or once every two weeks. But I know that that cannot be done. I live in the Deep South, and I do have a lot of people that live up north. So, anyway, maybe I am going to manifest that in my Law of Attraction, and it will come. Trust me. Okay, so, what am I going to dig into now? You know, as I think a lot of times, what I'm going to talk about or, you know, really people get maybe tired of hearing the same thing. I'm not sure. But me, myself, I'm never tired of hearing about the Bible and the bull or the players or even new archaeological evidence. See, Nurse Jay loves this. So, what does Ugarit and Christ have in common? What does Ugarit have to do with it? You know, that song, What's Love Have to Do With It? I believe it's by Tina Turner. I used to sing that song, I believe, in the 80s. Anyway, so, Ugarit to Christ. A debate? Debate a Christian. Debate a Christian today and see what happens to you. They'll say you're going to hell, but that's okay, my friends. There's no hell. Okay. I've been telling you about those um, Ugaritic tablets. Remember from Rosh Hashanah um, in Syria? where they had the king's list and they had all these tablets and then when they started putting it up against the Bible, they were like, uh-oh, there's something wrong with this picture. Well, 
In the Bronze Age Ugaritic mythology by the Iron Age Israelites is well documented in Bible scholarship. For example, the rider of the clouds, Baal, was said to battle against Yam. And I remember I did a video about that yesterday. And Nahar and Lotan. And several hundred years later, we find that the Israelites telling the same story about the Clider, the Clider, the rider on the clouds. I'm dyslexic, I think. Yahweh battling Yam, Neharim, and Leviathan. Isn't that funny? But praise God we put our lives on this. And we will die for this. And we believe it. It seems that no one outside the ivory towers or the Vatican, or your church, talks about Ugarit. I challenge you, friends. Why don't you go to your pastor this Sunday and say, do you know anything about the Ugaritic text in Rosh Hashanah? He would look at you like you had ten heads. Or maybe not. Maybe they do know and it's a hush-hush kept secret. You see, friends, Nurse J can't do that because I will go off on you. Even though I'm a Pisces, I'm a lovable little person and an extrovert and loves people. Hmm, when I know something and I know it's right. Mm -mm, I can't do it. So, if you've never heard of this before, I challenge you, spend some time Googling it. And if you're just now hopping on my channel, watching this, Christians, I, please, I do not intend to hurt feelings, or Muslims, or um, the Judaic at Ton Worship Faith. Um, there were several several motifs that were handed down all the way down to the New Testament, in particular about the similarities between the Baal cycle and the Jesus story. There's many elements of the Jesus story that originated in pre-Israelite religion. Also, you got to realize Israel. Ra is the sun, the moon, the eyes of God. Okay? Because the Egyptian religion, the moon and the sun were the eyes of God. El, God. All right. Anything with Ra in it, that ought to give a red flag. L, E L, Big Daddy L, inherited from the Ugarit is one of the many Hebrew names or titles giving or referring to Yahweh. Yahweh was originally a son of L, as I have said many times. Attested in Deuteronomy 32 8. And in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Like Jesus, Baal is the begotten son of El. Begotten? Hm. I heard that Thoth, Jehudi, was begotten of Ra. He's also the tongue of Ra, <laughs> the speaker. Baal is our Lord. 
and there is none above him in the Ugaritic texts. We should all bring his chalice. We should all bring his cup. Groaning he cries to bull El his father, to El the king who begot him. That is straight out of the Ugaritic text, what I just read to you. In all of the Canaanite myths, legends, writings, only two gods, only two gods are known to have been the rider or the charioter of the clouds, Yahweh and Hadad. In Daniel 7, this epithet is bestowed to the Son of Man. It otherwise unique application to the chief deity suggests divine status. From there, the epithet is picked up by the Gospels and Revelation when Jesus is said to come with the clouds to battle many of the headed sea dragon Satan and destroy the sea itself just as Hadad battled the many headed sea dragon Lotan and destroyed Yam. And in the Canaanite myth, it said, drank the sea to the dregs and dried him up. In fact, Revelation is drawing on fulfillment of Isaiah 27, which almost quotes the bell cycle as it moves from the primordial past to the eschatological future. Revelation even notes that the dragon had previously received a fatal head wound as Yahweh Hadad specifically crushed the head of Leviathan. Isn't that funny? <laughs> oh, you wonder after the beast. The number of the man is 666. And the beast recovered from his wound. Oh, damn. You are looking for somebody to get shot on the side of Los Angeles. And two witnesses running around looking and they're telling. And this man, when, they, when someone kills these witnesses, after three days, they will resurrect. end is near. Oh my God, do you see how stupid this is? Now you Bible people. It says they're also arguing that Jesus is identifiable with Michael. Exodus 15 paraphrases the Baal cycle in relation to the C narrative. For even further reading, check out how the story of the sky god versus the sea serpent is found everywhere from Scandinavia to Japan to India to Egypt and maybe even the Congo. Isn't this funny? Sea versus sky. An Inky and Enlil story. It's just the battle of the two. The battle of the natures. Okay, moving on. The chief concern of the middle portion of the Baal cycle is the construction of his temple. Valent Baal rejoiced. Now this is in the Ugarit text. My house I have built of silver, my palace out of gold. In the Septuagint, Zechariah 6 says, It is said that the high priest Jesus will build the temple of the Lord. And of course, gospel Jesus says, I will destroy this temple made with hands. And in three days, I will build another made without hands. While Christianity reinterprets the prophecy metaphorically, 
Jesus is a temple builder nonetheless. A carpenter, a Freemason. Baal is killed by Mot or Mot or Moot, the god of death. According to Paul and other early Christian sources, such as the Ascension of Isaiah, Jesus, now listen to this, according to Paul and other early Christian sources, such as the Ascension of Isaiah, Jesus was crucified by the archons of this eon, referring to Satan, the god of this world, you know. And his demons. Zechariah 3 features Satan opposing Jesus before he is reclothed in white. Which is a motif from the flood tablet of the Epic of Gilgamesh, which also features Adad. While Yahweh brings about the end of all sin in a single day. Good God. Yahweh, a Canaanite God, saving the day, taking the sins away. But nobody has to be crucified for it. But it also tells you in Scripture in Ezekiel chapter 18, that the son does not die for the sins of the father. The father does not die for the sins of the son. It also says in the Old Testament that if you turn from your wicked ways and pray, then you're fine. So which is it? If you're a Judeo-Christian and you believe that someone came down here to die for you, then you're wrong because the Egyptians say that you must deal with your own demons and you must change your own wicked ways to where your soul can be cleansed and you will be conscious. Oh, you see, friends, some of the Egyptian stuff in the Old Testament. Hmm? Now, see, that's why you got to know and I can pick out the Egyptian BS from the Aten stuff. He had nothing to do with Egypt. Nothing. The only thing he kept was circumcision. And he was a jealous God. Now, Daniel 9 shows a dying Messiah. The sole line where Paul clearly attributes Jesus' death to earthly authorities. 1 Thessalonians 2 is overwhelmingly regarded as an interpolation. Evidently, someone at some time was bothered by the ambiguity. Oh, friends, do I have to disappoint you today? It's hump day. It's almost at the end of the week. We want to have a little bit of something good. Did you know in the Ugaritic text, it says Baal is offered up like a lamb? And KTU 1.6, 2, and 21. The verb referring specifically to a ritual sacrifice. And Baal is offered. Woohoo! Oh, are you going to like this? Group of women, including one known as the Virgin, mourn his death search for his body, and play a special role in the funeral rites. And Baal is buried and descends to the underworld like Jesus for three days, and he preaches to the people. And they're asking for just a little bit of water on the tip of the tongue. Boy, this is getting good, isn't it? Hope you're enjoying this. Baal rises from the dead with the sun, S-U-N. And Bart Ehrman, which I've read about three books of his, misquoting Jesus, um, did Jesus really exist? And um, how Jesus, um, uh, misquoting Jesus, did Jesus exist? How they made Jesus, uh, turning him into God. And um, 
something else about Bart Ehrman. Anyway, he points out that oddity that there is no actual resurrection narrative in the Gospels. That's true, friends. And Mark chapter 16, it ends at verse 8 or 9. And then from like 9 to 20, that never was in the original canonical gospel. But does the Christians know? But the stupid ass preachers will go up there and start talking about it. Why don't you go up to your preachers and say, you know what? That was an interpolation two to four hundred years later by Eusebius and those bastards. How about it? I think we should have a mob and I think we should have those big, long poles with fire on the end of them like they used to have back in the Frankenstein days around the churches. Oh, but if anything happened to the church, we would be called heretical and Satanist. But who are the real Satanists? The scene of Jesus rising is not depicted. He's just buried, and the next, the tomb is empty. What's interesting is that what is depicted in Mark 16 is the women coming to the tomb at the rising of the sun. To be told, he did rise, different verb in Greek. Luke 1, 7, 8, in a prophecy attributed to Zacharias, identifies Jesus as the sunrise from on high. Focusing is well okay focusing on the Zacharias tradition back in the Septuagint the temple building high priest Jesus is giving the name rising and as he rises up from beneath Philo of Alexander quotes this the, the book of confusion of the tongues in 63 page 146 and says that it is appropriate that he be called I guess the rising sun because it's in some Greek because he is the firstborn son raised up by the father of all, also known as the divine image, logo, celestial high priest, and ruling archangel of many names. Subsequently, Baal and Jesus attain victory over death, and Baal ascends to eternal kingship by the blessing of El. Isn't this funny? Hold on, guys. Listen to me. Baal ascends to eternal kingship forever by the blessing of El. So does the Son of Man in Daniel 7. So does the Jesus of Zechariah 6. So does the Jesus of in the New Testament. And these are the religious texts from Ugrit. And you can find this on the website called Reddit, R E D D I T dot com, and just put in from Ugrit to Christ. So there again, this is what I say. How can you say what we're doing, I'm not doing it anymore, but what the world in America is doing, how can you say that that is so when you have all these other cultures and countries saying it was them, it's so. And Krishna, and Baal, and Yahweh, and Mithras, and Horus, and um, Odin, and um, all of these people. How can you say that from the Christian America point of view, you're going around and telling everybody else that you're going to hell you're Satan. You don't have the right God. It's all because of Akhenaten people. If it wouldn't have been for him starting this revolution, B.S. I do not believe. Now, I could be wrong. I will take pressure. And I can't admit when I'm wrong. But in my mind, what I'm saying out of my mouth is that if he wouldn't have started this bullshit, 
in Egypt, this shit would have never happened. And I'm sorry. If you don't like what I say, you can get off my channel. Okay? Plain and simple. It doesn't matter to me. I want people that want to know the truth, want to hear the truth. Because the truth is going to set you free, my friends. And sometimes people have to be rough. People have to get in your face. People have to expose. And if you just can't deal with it right now, maybe you can deal with it later. But I like it when people get in my face and tell me what's what. I don't want you skipping around. I want you to come out and tell me. So if he would have just stuck and did things, he was he was a rebel. I, I, I mean, he thought what he was doing was a good thing in his mind, and he was a rebel, and he was rebelling against um, the Amun priesthood, which later did probably and is corrupt and is the Catholic Church. Um, so maybe he was trying to do a good thing. But because of this, guys, it has, I mean, the Amun worship went back. And it just, it just traveled the way, the, the way it traveled. And when the Christian church got involved, um, you know, under Constantine, that's when our world has never been the same, guys. Ever since this Catholic church got into our lives in 300s, when they made um, Christianity the official religion, which is so funny because they were the ones that were killing the Christians, the Gnostic Egyptian Christians and the Essenes and the Therapeutes and, you know, things like that. And, and the people that wanted to still worship the old, old gods, right? They're going to take that and, and brand it on their own, right? But then put a spin on it with different religious rites and sacraments, which is still paganistic from Babylon, Assyria, Egypt. Uh, the list goes on and on because you can pull exactly what they're doing from what, 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 you know. There's no difference. So anyway, Hotep and Ashe, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.